Welcome to Our View. This show is aired on Channel 17 on Sunday at 3.30 a.m. and 11.30 a.m., on Monday at 7 a.m., on Thursday at 8.30 p.m., and Saturday at 5.30 p.m., among other times. Today, I am so honored and pleased to have as our guest Helene Snyder, the mayor of Santa Barbara, who is also running for Congress. And I want to put in right up front, she's the only woman from our 24th California district running for Congress. And I'm just delighted to have you here. Welcome. Thank you. It's great to be, great to see you. Now, before I have you talk about Santa Barbara or Congress, I want to offer you something. Okay. We are investigating, and my husband is a great one to do a lot of research, uh, changing our lawn from grass to false. Fantastic. And the one thing I asked my husband when we decided to do that is, well, we have to have something where Helene can put in her signs for Congress. <laughs> well, thank you for that. <laughs> because <laughs> we have a corner lot and one sign can go to the street going, you know, at the front and the other sign can go at the uh, side. Great. So well, that's great. <laughs> and a lot of people are doing what you're researching now, which is uh, taking their lawn out and putting in drought resistant plants or whatever it is to reduce water, and we're doing great in the city of Santa Barbara. We are uh, number one in Southern California, number four in the state when, oh, they were, when they were looking at making mandates, and so we are far and ahead of a lot of other municipalities, and people are doing their fair share in this drought. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Well, I also support you as the only woman from our 24th uh, district running for Congress. And so my first question then is, why do you think people should vote for you for Congress? Right. Well, thanks. Besides the fact you're the only woman, which really gets to me. <laughs> well, and, and <coughs> having uh, more represent, women representation in Congress, I think, is important. We've seen that time and again when it comes to issues that uh, I think I can say the 24th Congressional District cares about. Uh, I, uh, but why else? No, you know, what, what is it about me as a candidate? And a few things. Uh, first off, being, uh, being mayor of Santa Barbara has taught me so much, and it's been an honor to be the mayor of the city of Santa Barbara. Uh, I've learned a lot about how to work with a variety of different people in getting things done and to really focus on results. Uh, my first term as mayor was during the recession and yes. working with my council members on some really tough issues uh, and yet figuring out where the common ground was to move the city forward uh, in a way that didn't send people to the unemployment line during the recession, working I, with our bargaining units uh, and still providing essential core services was really very important. And we have an interview of you on the internet when this show was just between us. Okay. When we interviewed you uh, for uh, that, this SB dash just between us. Right. When you ran for mayor. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, to and, and I think, you know, it was, it was a challenging first term uh, with the economic situation, but I think the city came out even stronger. We're more efficient, we're more energy efficient, we're more organizationally efficient. Uh, and then working with my colleagues when the economy was starting to come back up to really focus on keeping, uh, returning some core uh, services that got reduced, such as library services, parks and recreations, um, but at the same time, making sure our general public safety and opportunities for, especially at-risk youth, to have the opportunities they have to make healthy choices, those were things we never cut. And so, you know, focusing on, on those issues, that was one, and the other was the general plan update, having a unanimous vote to look at the future of the city. So moving into Washington, you know, I think people generally see D.C. as a place of gridlock, a place where people focus on where they don't agree as opposed to where they do. And the more and more mayors in particular, I think, who get involved on the federal level, 
I think the more pragmatic we get, the more stand our ground on issues we care about, but work in a way to get things accomplished. And that's the kind of perspective I really want to bring to Washington. Oh, that's very impressive. And of course, I'm, I'm pleased that a woman is running also, you know. And I'm going to ask you a question now that affected me personally a few years ago. And that is about the Asian uh, or Pacific, I must say, trade, mm -hmm. trade pact. Uh, I have written a book uh, that is used as a textbook and it still sells well on acting and directing, method acting and directing. And my first publisher <coughs> retired. And so I was given the rights and the decision to either publish or print and immediately I heard from a Chinese company mm -hmm. wanting to print the book. And it would have been a lot less expensive than a uh, U.S. company. But I thought, no, I want to give the jobs to people here in the U.S., not mm -hmm. to Chinese. And so I went with a California company. And now when uh, the book is going to be reprinted again, uh, in the future, I'm going with a Santa Barbara company. Great. Kathy Feldman's Boo yeah. Book. Yeah. And I'm great. giving She's the business fantastic. right here in Santa Barbara. And I usually support President Obama and you know what he wants, but in this instance I agreed with or I agree with Lois Caps about mm -hmm. this uh, uh, twelve Pacific nation. Do you care to weigh in on sure. that? Sure. Uh, you know, it was an interesting <laughs> process to see what was going on mm -hmm. um, in Washington related to trade. And my concern with the trade pack as it was moving forward is a lot of it was very secretive. There were not things <coughs> that everyone knew what was in the deal. They were being asked to fast track something without knowing what they were voting on. <coughs> uh, I agree with you that we want to make sure, it's a balancing act, right? You want to make sure that the jobs that can stay in the United States, you, you're able to do so and not ship off American jobs. Right, and jobs. it costs me more money. And you want to make sure but I did that, that. <laughs> that in both environmental policies and mm -hmm. labor um, policies and workers' freedoms and out, right. you know, overseas are upheld. And there were a lot of questions around that. You know, in, our, in the 24th Congressional District, trade is important. And so you want to have fair trade, but you want to know what the rules are. You want to know th that, th that it is fair. And you want to make sure that, for example, our Central Coast wines can be traded, you know, and, and, um, and exported all over the world or whatever right. products that we have. And, and, but you don't want to lose American jobs in the meantime. And so it was a very interesting, uh, intense battle between amongst the Democrats, the Democrats in the party. And I could see that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yes. So I was I was very concerned about the environmental and the labor issues. Yes, uh, we want the, the middle class to be able to make a living. Right. right. Yes. Right. But you know, and we have to make sure that we are in a global economy. We need to make sure that trade does happen, but you want to balance things out with making sure things are stable here at home mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, another thing uh, that I want to stress to our viewing audience is we are taping this in July, but because I'm backed up and I have to go to London to teach an acting intensive and so forth because of my schedule, this will not play until September. Right. So people should be aware of that and Helene also is aware of I that. I wish I had a crystal ball of what September would look like right now so I'll have to watch this when it airs and see uh, oh good so you've got <laughs> that one down. Well one thing I'm hoping and you said that you're in touch with them is that Emily's List will support you mm -hmm. because uh, I remember when that first came out in 1985 I was on a women in film committee for the Oscar party and all of us on that committee were so excited about Emily's List. And since you're the only woman running for the, this uh, uh, district, you know, for Congresswoman, why hopefully at least Emily's List will support you. Yeah, Emily's, Emily's List. Actually, I don't know if many people know this, Emily is actually an acronym, not yes, just a name. I Emily knew that. stands for. <laughs> I, I, figured you knew that. Mm -hmm. uh, Emily stands for early money is like yeast, which <laughs> makes the dough rise. And, you know, uh, they focus on 
Democratic pro-choice women candidates in federal office. And so I've been in frequent communication with them. Uh, at this point in early July, the, the race was relatively new, and, and I would hope by September I can proudly show them as an endorser uh, and they can help with the campaign. And they, they've been great so far, in any case, with advice and resources. Um, they're doing their... Their number one issue is electing a woman president. Mm -hmm. Their second issue is trying to take back the Senate. And so they're focusing on a lot of um, pro-choice Democratic women Senate candidates. And now, just now in early July, they're just now starting to prioritize all the different races in the House. Oh, so, good. So, so we've been in frequent communication. And, uh, you know, just reading, the, actually, they have a great playbook on, on techniques on fundraising, which is very helpful for any woman running for any seat. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be federal races. Just a lot of really great tips. They're, they know yes. what they're doing. And I remember all my women in film colleagues, we were all excited about more women in Congress. Right. Well, and which you know, it's about 19% right now, which, you know, at, at one point it's like, wow, it's more than it's been, but come on, we can do a whole lot better, a whole lot better. And, you know, my role in my whole life, not just being in elected office, but even beforehand, I worked at Planned Parenthood. I was their human resources director. And I was also on my volunteer time involved with the Santa Barbara Women's Political Committee in uh, encouraging women to run and win elected office on a variety of seat in a variety of seats. So uh, it's something that I'm passionate about uh, and something that I think that perspective can bring to Congress and I hope not only to be a really good vote on issues related to equity and women, uh, women's rights and concerns, but also be a good voice on it as well and speak out and move that conversation forward on a national level. Well, I'm sure you will be and I look forward to your sign on signs there we on, go. Our, right. on our lot. Now, there's uh, something I'm going to ask you and you may not have a decision about this and I'm going to read it to be sure I get it correctly. Uh, yesterday or the day before, but just recently, The Nation magazine came out and it called on all 2016 presidential and congressional candidates to take the following pledge. And I know this is difficult because oil gives a lot of money, but this is the pledge. In the name of protecting our country and the world, from the growing dangers of climate change, I will neither solicit nor accept campaign contributions from any oil, gas, or coal company. Now that's a tough pledge, isn't it? Well, there are a lot of pledges. I would obviously haven't seen it, the full pledge. I want to read that. I, but I, I have to say, issues related to oil and gas and oil production in the 24th Congressional District, especially in the uh, Santa Barbara Channel, is uh, utmost important importance to voters in this race. And we just saw in May the terrible refugio oil spill. Oh, uh, You know, there's one project after another. Um, you know, really the big issue here, I think, it has to do with the role of money in politics. And we were just talking about Emily's List and how helpful they can be, and they are. Uh, I also think it's, it's really very interesting to, for candidates to really think about what they need to do in order to get their message out. And unfortunately, the amount of money in all levels of races have just been, you know, really quite, it, it, every year seems to be breaking new records. So I'm very careful about uh, reaching out to supporters and wanting to make sure that people know that where I come from and how I will vote on things will be based on what I think the, are in the best interest of the residents and voters of the 24th Congressional District. Issues related to offshore oil, I've um, been supportive of previous campaigns to restrict offshore oil drilling. Uh, and, you know, so that, that is something you'll have a strong representative on that issue. And I think the other piece is, honestly, is if we want to get ourselves away from fossil fuels, we need to, on a national level, incentivize other forms of renewable and, and clean energy, like wind, like solar, electric cars. What can we do as a on the national level to incentivize 
the economics behind it because yes. you can't just turn off the switch and expect life to change. You have to be able to transition away from fossil fuels onto another source of energy and to do that you need the economics behind it. And really only on a national level can we make that statement and move that, uh, move that conversation forward and that is a top priority for me. I was, uh, as I told you, I, I was a can uh, delegate from Wisconsin for Carter in 76. And I was so impressed with Governor Brown, and I thought he was just great. But I've been a little disappointed lately in his attitude toward oil companies. And he did backtrack about, mm -hmm. uh, was it the fracking, that he, he backtracked and, and uh, became a little more environmental, mm -hmm. <laughs> environmentally conscious sure. recently. But uh, uh, it's, it's a tough... Spot well, for and him he's to been, be yeah, he's so. he's been um, he's been in different places on on issues related to yes. environmental uh, regulatory agencies. I think again, this May refugio oil spill again. We're only in the beginning of July now, and by September, hopefully, we'll have a lot more answers. Uh, but you know, why was it that this pipeline was the only one that didn't have an automatic yes. shutup valve? And it was, and and the question really is, on a federal level, why is the federal guidelines so limited in the safety aspect of um, mistakes when they occur? It seems to work everywhere else in the county that has automatic shutoff valves, and so that um, conversation on a right. national level also needs to happen. Well, I was delighted to show my husband the. Uh, article about he backtracked and, and gave the agency uh, power again, right. you know. <laughs> so if you are elected to Congress, what committees would you like to serve on, yeah. Malin? To be honest, I'm focusing on the primary, which is in June. <laughs> okay. So, you know, one thing at a time. Don't want to, you know, um, uh, put curtains in a place I may not get into yet. Uh, but I, I plan to do very well. You know, I I think I look at what's important here on the Central Coast. Yes. Uh, there are, and, and what what kind of expertise can I bring given my role of being a mayor? Um, there are issues related to poverty and getting people out of poverty through programs that can assist them become more self-sustainable. Uh, issues related to homelessness has been a top priority for me as mayor and as a council member. And there are federal policies involved that and funding that can affect what happens here at home. Mm -hmm. um, the, so that issues related to that would be important. It, the environment and energy being more energy efficient and how can we again, as I said, move the conversation forward on a national level and providing incentives towards more green and renewable energy sources. I think issues related to transportation also relates to that. Uh, not just about getting around your car, but just getting from point A to point B on a variety of different ways, whether it be on <laughs> foot, by bus, on a bike. Um, you know, how can we get there safely and efficiently? Uh, and. And you know, a lot of the 24th Congressional District is very rural. There's a huge agricultural component to it. What uh, does it include? So a small slice of Ventura. That's right. And the North County. All of Santa Barbara County and all of San Luis Obispo County. I see. So mm -hmm. it's a very big district geographically. <laughs> Certainly it, it is. It has um, a huge part of the Los Padres National Forest. So issues related to open space protections and national parks. It includes the Channel Islands National Park. Um, you know, those kind of environmental protections, marine life sanctuaries is part of the district. Uh, but also there's a big agricultural piece to it too. And, and, and again, how do you create um, a, a viable industry that also takes care of the people who work for that industry? Mm -hmm. uh, that, that is a key component. Um, you know, being Santa Barbara, uh, being sort of a cultural, well not sort of, it is a cultural destination. There's lots of things related to the National Endowment for the Arts and there's lots of things related to the cultural economy. How can we look at the creative economy that we have through tech, ag through tech agencies, through um, oh. the performing arts in a way that actually b boosts our economy as opposed to just focusing on the low, uh, low, well, low wage jobs. You just in got another interest of mine. Oh, well, there you as go. As you Good. probably know. Uh -huh. When I was a professor in Wisconsin, Governor Knowles appointed me to his Wisconsin Arts Council. Mm -hmm. And that was the group that took care and read all of the applications for National Endowment of the Arts funding. And I have been so disappointed, it keeps getting less and less. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully, nationally, 
we will have more <laughs> funding from the National right. Endowment of the well, Arts. Well, and I think it's, pe and I look at this not only with hunger and homelessness issues or with energy um, programs, but same with the cultural economy in that investing in these programs and trying to get people to reach their full potential uh, it's not necessarily an expense. A lot of ways programs can be put together as incentives and investments and then the people when they reach and fulfill these, uh, are part of these programs, they're able to lift themselves out of whatever uh, terrible situation they may be in or whatever barrier is, is reaching them. So right. I really look at what can I do as a Congress member that helps people reach their full potential whether that be in uh, job opportunities, educational opportunities, that's going to be, I think, a big issue Oh, I as think well. so, too, and, and educational programs, right. too. I know in Wisconsin, I went all over the state for uh, the arts to be taught in the public schools and the private schools. Mm -hmm. And I know the President Obama, he has a... Uh, a, a proposal out there, as do other mayors around the country that oversee other parts of the education system, is there a way that anyone who is uh, anyone who needs to get a pathway towards free community college, not come out of college with so much debt that yes. either they or their families are burdened with after graduation, um, how can we either reduce the uh, interest rates of student loans or how do we find a pathway if someone's able to say, you know what, I, I want to find a way through a community college and do it in such mm -hmm. a way that I won't end up with so much debt at the end of it so I can lift myself up and, and whether it be through a vocational training or other forms of um, career opportunities. Those are the things we really need to work on on a national level. Right. I remember one time uh, maybe when I first moved to California, uh, people could go for two years to a city college and all of their credits would transfer then for a four-year program. And at one time, California had tuition-free yeah, city college. Anymore. Right. <laughs> so there is, I think there is a way certainly for the national government to, um, to figure out some way to give a pathway so anyone who wants to have some form of secondary education can do so regardless of their ability to pay for it. And, and maybe it means they have to give back you know, to, um, to their community in return as part of their uh, career building, whatever it takes, but just to burden people with that kind of debt, um, it just You mean after secondary to, to go on to? Well, so to get into secondary uh, schools. So, yes. so a lot of the federal, uh, federal um, loans that are available don't have the same kind of, of uh, they ha their interest rates are so much higher than you get other kinds of loans for. Why is that? What's the prioritization there? Right. You know, pay your loan back, but don't be burdened with such high interest rates for those kind of loans. Well, I, I think that's a, a, a good, uh, <laughs> good quest for you. Yeah. <laughs> is there anything else you'd like to tell our audience that uh, you are interested in if you are elected uh, to our Congress or uh, anything about sure. the city you'd like to tell our viewing audience? Remember, sure. it'll play in September. That's right, play in <laughs> September. Um, so honestly, I want to hear from your viewers. I'd love to hear from you. You can email me at Helene for Congress at gmail.com. Uh, you know, it, it, I want to hear what what is of interest of you, for you. September, things are going to really get start start getting busy. It's the primary is not till June. It's a competitive process. There's an open primary. The top two vote getters get uh, move on to the general uh, general election in November. And really, we're working very hard to reach everywhere we can throughout the district. And if you want to volunteer or just give me your advice, please contact me. I want to hear from you. So, and it'd be honor. It'd be an honor to be your next representative in Congress. And we would be honored to have you too. Thank you. And uh, particularly women. Remember, she's the only candidate <laughs> that's female, and we want more female uh, in females in Congress and just running our governments in general. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity to meet with you today. <laughs> well, you're you're uh, most welcome. Uh, so, I think uh, are there it cannot economic issues that will concern you uh, when you uh, when and if you become a Congresswoman? Sure, absolutely. Uh, you know, 
Well, there's right now the debate about the federal minimum wage, mm -hmm. and it's woefully below where it needs to be, has not kept up with inflation, it's keeping people within poverty. Um, that's a national conversation that needs to occur. Um, again, as I mentioned, educational opportunities, allowing people to get into a position where they can rise up and, and be able to um, on focus on, on their own interest in a way that's economically sustainable. Uh, hunger issues uh, is a huge, huge piece. So we've done some great programs um, working with No Kid Hungry in our, in our Parks and Rec programs, um, giving kids oh. the ability to have lunches throughout the summer. Santa Barbara's been terrific yeah. about that. We do take care but of our But food policy here. on a national level uh, needs, some, needs some tweaks out mm -hmm. there in terms of being able, we have the capacity to enable that no kid should be hungry in the United States. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, that affects their health, affects their education, affects their future economic well-being. Just as basic as that. Now we only have two minutes left. So is there anything you particularly would like to have our viewing audience know about your candidate being candidate for Congress or Santa Barbara or whatever? Yeah. Well, I, I think, again, I, um, I have a record of speaking out on issues that I believe resonates with the 24th Congressional District. I am someone who will do my homework, who gets involved in the details, who knows what she's voting on, and will speak out on things on a national level. I want to take the things that are working well in California and use the position in Congress to move that onto a national level, to really see how can we focus on, again, everyone being able to reach their full potential in a variety of ways. And if I can do that as a member of the California Congressional Delegation and take the best practices from this great state and, and move that on on a national level, I think we've done a great job. And I really hope um, the voters will contact me and get their support. Well, I thank you for being on the show. And I thank our crew, Diane and, and um, Mark in the booth, and Tyler and Andrea, and the next person. Morgan, I think. Morgan. Right. I got all the names <laughs> in. We have wonderful crews here. Well, thank you. <laughs>